Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Tuesday, March 30th, 2021. I am Andrew Hansen, alongside Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach. And we've got a little baby four-game NBA DFS slate. Coach, how does that sound to you? Wow, man, it, it's bizarre because we've had all these 10s, 11s, 9s. I mean, it is, it's interesting to only have a four-bagger. It's going to be fun, though. It's, uh, you know, we can focus in the, the four uh, games for the full slate and then a little two 10 p.m. games for the uh, after-hour slate. And that lets us watch a little NCAA. And, and I got a question for you, Andrew. Yes. you have any idea who's tied for first? I don't. In our NCAA I, contest? You know, I was traveling last night, so I'm not up on the standings. You're going to have to tell me. Uh, let's just say I'll tip the hat to the gentleman that's in first. <laughs> oh, you tipped it to yourself. Very nice. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And you know what? It looks looks a little tedious here, though, because I have Michigan winning it all, okay. which would be beautiful. And the uh, the person that's like almost dead tied with me, I think it is. Who is was it Deb? It Deb posted something. Deb is Deb is right there, and okay. she's got Gonzaga and Jordan. Uh, B Jordan is B Jordan is right there with us too. Okay. So I'm get the bottom line is I have to beat. I got to get Gonzaga out of there, and they haven't well, good lost. Good luck with that. Since 2018, <laughs> I think. So good. Who knows? But I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts. You know. Excellent. Well, and good. by the way, I I had so many comments yesterday about my egg head. Yeah, that I had to I had to directly go back to the coach so I would, or the coach's hat because I didn't want to uh, scare any more children. So good, good, excellent, good, good <laughs> choice, and and good of you to tip the cap there to yourself while you can because it doesn't sound like you're gonna finish atop the standings. But hey, you you enjoy it while you can. That's right. And so we're gonna try to finish atop the standings tonight in NBA DFS with this four game slate. And we only have three teams involved in a back-to-back, and we don't have any totals over 230 on BetUS, at least when they opened. Uh, right. So we're going to grind here, but not as much news to deal with on, on only four-game slate, and only one early game. Why don't you kick it off for us? Absolutely. Yes, it's a, it's going to be a standalone game. It's seven, um, and uh, you know that with some NCAA until the, the late three games, but... It's the Charlotte Hornets at 23 and 22 against our lovable Washington Wizards at 17 and 28. Probable lineups, Graham, Rogier, Hayward, Washington, and Biombo. And for Washington, Westbrook, and then the gigantic uh, question mark for Beal, which we have no clue if he's going to play or not. A little hip flexor going on, so we have to see what that is. And then Advia, Hashimura, and Len, it looks like. And... Unfortunately, Gafford is listed as doubtful. There's, I watched him yesterday when he twisted that ankle. It looked bad. So he's, I very seriously doubt he's going to play. Um, so a little extra run for Lennon Lopez probably at the big, unless they go small and play Hashimura there against Charlotte, who often does the same and goes small with Washington at the five. So, you know, right off the bat, you know, big alert with the the bigs, Biombo. Zeller, Len, and Lopez, I I would steer clear of all four of them just because of that scenario, the rotation, et cetera, et cetera. So the bigs in this game I don't think are in play. By the way, Malik Monk is listed probable, so he should go again uh, to get in that guard rotation for Charlotte. We have the 14th fastest team in the league in Charlotte, and Washington still remains the first and uh, they they do get up and down the floor. Westbrook playing like he's 18 years old. And then defensively, it's a, it's a good sign here. 20th for Charlotte, 26 for Washington. So, you know, how many guards? Who do we play? How do we play it? If Beal's out, we said it yesterday, and I stuck with it with Beal as my main, or Westbrook is my main play with Beal out. And he went bananas is the way, best way to put it. It he was threatening to get 100 DFS points for the, fir- from the, uh, for the first time since Harden did it a little over two years ago. And, uh, you know, he had ludicrous numbers going into the fourth quarter, uh, 21 assists, some insanity. So he didn't quite make 100, but, man, to go 
uh, 6X plus with an $11,000 salary is pretty darn impressive. So, hey, you know, the, the question is, if this game stays close, every indication is that it will. Without Beal, you got to think they're going to go f- full run with Westbrook. I do want to get your opinion, though, because, you know, the concern is for the first good portion of the season, Westbrook sat out the second night of doubleheaders. So is he going to get any extra run? Uh, let me ask you that question first before I give you my the guys I'm leaning towards here. Do you think he gets full run tonight? I do. It's Westbrook. Like you said, he's playing like he's 18 year old, 18 years old, but he has the experience of a, of a crafty vet in the NBA like he does. And, okay. you know, he's, he's winning the battle against uh, father time here and his energy. I don't know what he does. If he drinks Mountain Dew coffee, <laughs> you know what it is that he's doing, but he is just incredible. So he's certainly in consideration for me, even though it's a back to back. Well, if yeah, I mean, if he's going to get full run and Beal sits, I just don't know how you avoid him. I mean, it's almost impossible because, you know, his his ceiling, as he proved yesterday, is, you know, out of this world. And Charlotte, is, Charlotte isn't exactly a defensive juggernaut. So, you know, if Beal sits, Westbrook, I'm just going to plug him in and run with it. Was really, I'm telling you, I get more and more excited every game. Hashimura just is dominating time possession, usage. He's starting to be really a, a very integral integral part of this team. After Westbrook and Beal, he is the man. Uh, you know, they run plays for him, lots of alley-oops, everything else. So his price still hasn't gotten where I think it should be. Uh, it's going to con- continue to drift up as he continues to smash. But until it gets to the point where I'm uncomfortable, he is going to continue to make my lineup. Um, on the Charlotte side, you know, I think Terry Rozier is a really nice play. Uh, his price is a little high, but I like it. Uh, Gordon Hayward is certainly in play here as well. You know, it's a, it's a monster pace up game for these guys. So those are the first two spots I go. I go with Rozier and Hayward. I'm not afraid to spend money in this game. Cause like you said, you look at the rest of these lines and it's like, my goodness, you've got a, a two fifteen and two and two games that are 220 and a half. So this is the, the big biggest scoring game, according to Vegas, on the night and a strong pace. So I'm going to have a lot of exposure here, uh, more than likely a, a Rogier, Hayward, Westbrook, Hashimura, Mishmash, and uh, I'll see how the rest of it works out. I know that's a lot of salary, but I will feel pretty darn good seeing my name up in lights there going into these late three games. Yeah, that's I what- hope. Yeah, that's that's my plan as as well. And you said something about the guards here, and I am love in love with the guards in this game, Westbrook for sure. Um, you know, the problem on Fanduel is that I'd like to play multiple point guards. Westbrook is one of them. Um, on the other side, you've got Rozier as a point guard, and yeah. then some of these value plays with Washington. If Beal is out. Jerome Robinson got the start. He's a point guard. He looked good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he 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 got over 5x even though he didn't shoot well. Um and you know, if he starts again, he's a guy that you could look at. And then also Neto off the bench gets a little bit oh, extra. Oh, he looked terrific, man. He looks like a starting point guard. He, it was like TJ McConnell light, you know? It's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. And so there's three guys on the same team who are point guards on FanDuel that I, that I think could all hit value. So that that makes it tough when you've got Rogier on the other side that's worth playing. Uh, and then Graham, the, you know, at least the good news for him on FanDuel is that he's a shooting guard. And I love True. his price at 5300 uh, Everybody got, well, not everybody, but there's a few guys that got a, a big bump with Monk out last game against Phoenix. Graham, how about Graham and Rogier? Graham took 16 three pointers and Rogier took 12. Oh my gosh. And how about this stat? Those two guys, uh, they combined for 52 points and the, together they only had four assists. That's, that's a little <laughs> bit concerning. Uh, yeah. Usually, if you have two guards taking that many shots and scoring that much, you want them to be feeding each other. And getting that correlation, and it was a little bit more one-on-one ball with yeah. those guys. So something to keep an eye on. But I think you could play both of them against Washington. 
And then, you know, it is going to be important for me if Monk plays or not, because those guys got a little bit of a boost with, without him. And then Cody Martin is the guy off the bench who got a little boost, 26 minutes. He's a good price. Miles Bridges also was heavily involved, 37 minutes yeah. in that overtime game. He's a little bit more expensive, but he's a guy that can really have some high-scoring games and then some duds. So he's more of a GPP right. option for me. 100%. And I agree with you. I'm going to avoid these bigs. You've talked a lot about how P.J. Washington will play small ball center. And that game against Phoenix, there's never been a better example of it where Biombo and Zeller, neither one of them even got 20 minutes. Yeah. And th- that really could happen again here with Washington. So I think you you kind of you move up to the bigs, quote unquote, with guys like Rui, and then you stop the analysis and you you avoid the centers. And how about P.J. Washington against Phoenix? 44 minutes and he didn't score. Oh, for that seven dude is, from the that field. is a strange man right there. I've never seen a guy that can go zero points. He's done that before this year. And and then all of a sudden he scores 30. I mean, it's, you know, I he's a nightmare for a cash player like me. Yeah, he really is. No but, part. But, you know, these other guys we've talked about, are, I think you'll feel better about uh, no, no bad dreams with Westbrook and company in this matchup. I think the guards are really going to help us tonight. And then I do also want to mention... Chandler Hutchinson, he's another minimum price guy. He was on the clipboard last night, got 8x return, 18-5. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's the guy that's the new guy on the block who who's benefiting from Bertans still being out. And you've got Denny Avdia. He's also cheap. So, the, you know, the nice thing about uh, getting multiple guys in this game is you can pay up for Westbrook and then balance it out with a couple cheap guys. Yeah, there's some good value there. And I think Hutchinson's got potential. I thought he did in Chicago, but... They just got tired of him getting hurt every other week. But keep it, keep an eyeball on him going forward. Absolutely. All right, game two, Philly and Denver. There will be a lot of eyeballs on this one on NBA TV at 9 o'clock Eastern. 220.5 total. Denver favored by five. And the news here, everybody's good to go for Philly. On the Denver side, Monte Morris still out. But those fighting Joe Stantons are, are looking good. They smashed Atlanta. With the new guys in town, uh, Aaron Gordon. Did you see Joe uh, putting a bunch of uh, pictures of Aaron Gordon in his Nuggets uniform up there? <laughs> hey, you can't uh, blame him, man. That is a, so. It was like a, a schoolgirl with a crush. He was so excited. <laughs> man, that that starting five: Murray, Barton, Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, Jokic. That is yeah, tough. Man. The that West is tough. The West better watch out. These guys are are coming together now. I think it's a better lineup than Utah. I know that sounds stupid because they're a million games behind Utah, but it sure sounds better to me. Yeah, the overall firepower on offense is is awesome. Porter Jr.'s defense is is still an issue, but uh, and Murray's defense, yeah. um, and the team twenty first. You know that's that's their Achilles heel. They're twenty first defensively. Right. You look at Philly on the other side; they're number two. So this is not going to mm-hmm. be an easy night. For Denver to score, but they get uh, the little pace up situation here. Philly sixth in pace. We know Denver is slow, t- 29th. So a, a bit of a contrast in styles. And, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a ton of exposure to this one. Obviously, we've got a lot of guys rostered already from the first one. Who who will we target here? Well, with that tough Philly defense, uh, you know, even though Aaron Gordon is the, the shiny new guy on the block here, the new toy, I'm not sure I'm going to go there. He got 21 minutes in the first game there against Atlanta, and they still gave decent minutes to Millsap. He got 20. Jermichael Green got 14. By the way, he was phenomenal. In 14 minutes, he scored 20 points, uh, seven rebounds. So he's trying to cling That's to his. Nuts. He's trying to cling to his spot in the rotation. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a little bit mixed there because it was a blowout. So I would think Aaron Gordon would get more minutes tonight. But you know, he's not my primary target tonight. I think you got to look at. Jokic here and figure out is there enough value to play him and Westbrook so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep playing with that uh, but let's talk about his matchup because Dwight Howard is the x-factor here once again and the <laughs> Philly's been starting Mike Scott uh, at our the, members aren't gonna be happy with you Andrew <laughs> I know well <laughs> let's think about it though they want to kill him <laughs> well two ejections in a row is pretty incredible and it's un- that is incredible it's really unfortunate because the first one uh he just finishes the game we cash in that lineup and then the same thing last time 
where he was he was almost at a double double in 19 minutes. He was crushing it, and he gets ejected again. So, could you possibly play him three slates in a row? Here's what I think, and I'm curious. Do you agree? Don't they have to start Dwight Howard against Jokic? Or, or I mean, are they going to really put Mike Scott out there and hope that that he can contain him? Well, I'll tell you, I want to see that because. I would have, I mean, Doc has been very adamant. He said the one time he started Howard, I, I mean, this was literally from his mouth. He said the one time he started Howard, it was a bad decision. He wasn't going to do it anymore. It screwed up the rotation. It, it, it was a mess. And he wants to bring Howard off the bench. So I, I think that they do start Scott and it's going to be, you know, the, the Joker with the big eyes like in the cartoon you know, looking at the the huge pile of uh, gold there, because I don't know who's going to stop him. Well, I guess you could put Tobias Harris on him. I would think Tobias Harris would have as much of a chance to slow him down as Mike Scott would. I mean, he's a little. They bit... should have kept Bradley. That was a dumb trade yeah. to trade him. This you know? is this is a big question mark for me. Is is what does Philly do? Who do they start? How do they try to defend Jokic? And, and when at what point is Howard going to get thrown out? Right. Does he get if he? I mean, I'll take it if he gets twenty six minutes. Then let's go for the trifecta, the hat trick. He, he can, can get thrown out the again. Joker right in the nose, and then we'll just call it even. If he looks at him sideways, he's going to get tossed. The way things are going, man, Unreal. two of the weakest ejections ever. So they were weak, and, yeah. but you know he's got to know, like Draymond and these other guys. You get that reputation, you've earned it. You got to really be careful. Yep. Yeah, you do. So other than those bigs that I'm really looking at pretty closely, you know, all these smaller guys, so to speak, I'm not that fired up about tonight. There's nobody jumping off the page. Uh, so I'll throw it over to you. Anybody you like in this game more than me? Well, I I mean, I sort of chimed in there, but I'm just confused here. I mean, I, I want to find a way to get to the Joker if what I think is going to happen and Mike Scott starts. I just, you know, I know... Howard will get in there then at some point, but you know, I just, I don't want to play Howard. I, I am with probably a lot of folks and I know it's, you got to forget and take every game at face value, but I, I just, his, obviously his focus and mental state's not right to get, to get ejected two games in a row. You, I, I don't care how weak it is. You got to be in just a dope. And, and the thing in this game is I, I can see him getting in foul trouble in like lickety split, trying to guard the Joker and extending himself out there. I just am concerned and I don't feel comfortable with it. So, you know, I'm thinking the Joker is the play with Westbrook and then inevitably some value is going to open up. The, the unfortunate thing is all that Orlando cheap play guys, uh, they they priced up a bunch of them. So. Right. You don't get quite as much of a break there. But, you know, you can find value. You know, you may have to swallow hard and, and hold your breath with like an Advia or, you know, Marcus Morris came through for me again last night. I keep playing that dude at 4,400 and he keeps hit, hitting the, yep. the number. Um, you know, so you can find guys. You're Bogdanovich, Atlanta. There's a lot of people that you can find. And as of right now, I would go with the Joker in this game. I'm not going to play anybody else from Denver because I think everybody else, you're going to see a lot of ball sharing. And I think you made the best point is these guys are scrapping for their, uh, you know, in the rotation lives right now. Millsap, Jamichael Green, you know, the, the some of the guards off the bench. Uh, they have depth now. And uh, if you're not playing well, you're not going to stay in that rotation. So, that concerns me because that means that usage is going to get spread around even more. Um, I think eventually it didn't in this last game, but I think as Gordon gets more acclimated, it's going to scoop a little bit from Porter. It already has a little bit with Barton. So I doubt going forward, you're going to see me. Sorry, Joe Stan, uh, but I, I doubt I'm going to be playing a lot of nuggets, except in situations like this where I think the Joker is just a perfect fit. Um, on the Philly side, you know, it's a pace down game for them. Uh, you can always pay up for Tobias Harris when Embiid's out. I, I don't blame anybody for doing that. And I'd love to do it, 
but in the current Westbrook Jokic word world, it's I'm not going to have the salary. If I do come off of Jokic, um, then Harris would be the guy from this game that I'm looking at, and that's about it. All right. Well, you mentioned the Orlando guys, and they're in the next one. Yeah, and we've got or- Orlando and Clippers. Here's the concern: uh, Orlando with all these young guys in this rotation, and you know, tanking the season, and it's just such a disaster. It's so scary playing guys when you don't know for sure what's going to happen because they're, you know, like like the Thunder. It's just they're fishing around with guys, seeing who they want for their future, and it's not the best DFS scenario. Plus, the Clippers are an 11.5-point favorite, um, which is a lot, and it's only a 215 total. But the Clippers are on the second night of a back-to-back, which puts Kawhi in jeopardy here. Uh, I've got to think if Paul George is able to come back, maybe Kawhi sits. There's no news on that yet, but we have to really keep an eye on it. These last two 10 o'clock games, you know, you may have to save a spot. And the fact that there's two of them, you can rotate around. So if you do want to start a Kawhi and he does get scratched, you can always you know, use a couple 2v2s and go to maybe a Trey Young or Booker or, you know, whatever else you have to do there. But, you know, we definitely need the news here, obviously, on uh, George, who's listed questionable. And then we're going to keep Beverly, Ibaka, and Rondo all questionable because they were last night also. So we got to keep that in mind because any combination of them could be ruled in. Um and then, you know, I do think Terrence Ross will play. He's probable. And the, the coach speak I read was it sounded like he was going to play. You know, you've got pace of 19 and 26. That doesn't excite me. But defense of 18 and then 10. Uh, the Clippers can I knew they'd bust the top 10 eventually. They're almost there. Um, you know, I, I'm a little nervous here. I, I'd love to take value plays from Orlando. But now it's getting a little cloudy. Those new guys are playing, you know, the Porters, et cetera, et cetera. You know, but Okiki looked really good again. He smashed for me, and I'm I'm really interested in him. James Ennis is really sort of the the catalyst there. But with with T Ross back, I mean, we if if he is gonna play, he would be the first guy on my list from Orlando just because you know, unfeathered amount of shots for this dude. I mean, he may take 25, 28 shots. Um, So you got to look at him. But the rest of it, it it gets really difficult, you know, with Carter Williams and, uh, you know, just multiple players getting minutes and and running there. And none of them really making uh, value. Birch possibly. You know, but, you know, uh, they just they have a lot of guys now and I don't think they want to win. So it scares me on that side with the Clippers. Jackson coming off a great game certainly is is playable at his price. Um, And like I said, you know, Marcus Morris hasn't done me wrong in a long time. And then you've got Zubats, who's been hugely owned by people. So there are plays in this game, just not a lot of like value that's really safe but i'm not going to make final decisions i'll save a few spots for late swap uh in this game but i need to know the george slash Kawhi news because in my opinion sitting here right now they're both 50 50 to play yeah i'll just lay out a prediction and and if it works okay. then here's my analysis if i'm just going to predict that paul george plays Kawhi sits and bold it, yeah, and then if the other guys are out, Beverly Ibaka and Rondo, then maybe they just start Luke Kennard again, and they say Kawhi. What a finish to that game! What yeah. the <laughs> hell was that? And it's funny because we were texting, and you said Luke Kennard, and Luke Kennard starting. Let's go with Luke Kennard. And I'm thinking to myself, oh God, I hope he. And look at what he did. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. So nice we, call, man. Oh yeah. Thanks. Kudos. Yeah. So that yeah. that uh, after hours uh, lineup cashed and. You know they he's he's still cheap. You know man, man they've priced up now to forty seven hundred. Uh, yeah. Who's man? He has man has man been awesome when he's given the up fourteen six and six in thirty four minutes. That you know this just shows how deep they are. 
these guys That's how he earned the extra and in man yeah he's that good <laughs> i mean the, showing their their potential and skill as young as young guys and you've got beverly and rondo ready to come out and take this team you know as far as they can go in the playoffs with their veteran leadership so if that's the lineup uh george is playable for me luke Kennard, if he starts again he's playable man is still playable like you said morris is a, is a value play batum as a small forward might actually get an extra look from me tonight because of the way the positions are set up on fanduel so maybe a one off for the clippers on the Orlando side, I l- really liked how Bacon looked uh, against the Lakers. I watched a lot of that game, and he was really the go-to guy. How much will that change when Ross comes back? I think it will that's change. That's my concern. Yeah, but that's my concern. They they never start Ross. You know, he, it's almost like Philly and Dwight Howard. You know, yeah. his role is come off the bench as the the microwave, Vinny Johnson, the you know heat it up and and score. And I guarantee you half our audience doesn't know who Vinny Johnson <laughs> is. They're too young. Well, half do, <laughs> half do probably, and they appreciate Look it. Look it up. Detroit yeah. Pistons, fellas. Yeah. So the thing with Ross is it's that knee that's been bugging him. So, yeah, he's going to come back and want to take 20 shots. But, you know, how is he physically? And his price is pretty expensive. So I would lean towards Bacon here if I could only play one guy from Orlando. Uh 33 minutes, 19 shots, and and again, it was the way he looked, too. He was the go-to guy getting the ball at the, at the top of the key, and they said, go to work and, and get us a shot. So I like him, even though it is a tough matchup defensively because he's going to be the key guy. With the bigs, there was some overlap, but it was a little bit messy with Birch, Wendell Carter Jr., and Bamba. Yeah. Bamba played well. Uh, but he's a little bit pricey, though, for, for the amount of minutes he, he gets. And Okiki, like you said... he. You played him, and he's really improved his shooting. He was a bad percentage early in the season, but he's had three straight games where he's been stroking it from three. Yeah. So he's he's in a nice groove here. He he's playable. Uh, so I could I could come out of here with potentially one guy from from either side. Are Are you gonna save a spot then, like for late swap? Like if you plug George in there, is that the plan? Yeah, that's what I would have to do. And the nice thing is that uh, on Fanduel where you really have to think about that because you're locked right. into a position. Booker is yeah. cheaper than Paul George, so you can easily make that pivot no matter what. Good. Uh, couldn't do that yeah, last night. Yeah, because I'll tell you, right, people get hand, you know, their, their hands uh, tied because, you know, you can do it on DraftKings. You can usually, you know, flip and flop, and you have that utility spot. But right. on, on FanDuel, man, you're locked down. Yes, you are. And that was a that was a surprise that that crushed my GPP lineup last night because Paul George was in there. If he plays and has a normal game, we cash. But we had to pivot to Levine, and he put up a dud. Uh, uh, so tell me about it. I yeah. was so so upset about that, but it happens. Yes, it does. Um, hey, you want to uh, let folks know before we hit this last game what we got cooking? Because this is. Did you know that this we are forty eight hours from the start of Major League Baseball? Well, I, I, you know, you said four bagger at the top of the show here since we have four NBA games, and it reminded <laughs> me this is MLB opening week, uh, which yeah. is exciting. I love it because spring is here. Uh, nothing like baseball, uh, so perfect time to join if you want to participate with the DFS Coach Talk family in Discord and get our full lineups in all of our four sports. Then jump aboard. Go to uh, dfscoachtalk.com to grab whichever membership you'd like. You grab a three-day pass for 10 bucks and try us out and then uh, take one of our longer memberships, which is what a lot of folks do. Um, or uh, our BetUS offer is still on the table. You can see it scrolling across the bottom on YouTube. Go to uh, betus.com.pa. Make your first deposit of 149 and you get to use that for your sports wagering action, and you get a free two-month membership with us that goes until June 1st. And all of our memberships are for all four sports, baseball, basketball, football, and golf. So uh, it's a terrific time to join. Uh, after you join on BetUS, uh, shoot us a message on Twitter, at DFS Coach Talk. Let us know that you've done that. We'll get you into our Discord. That's where we give out the full lineups, Coach, about 20 minutes before lock. So... Any questions? Yeah, I learned the lesson hard this week, and you didn't tease me about it yet. But like a dummy, I tried to put the the lineups up an hour early just <laughs> just for the heck of it. Yeah. 
and that that blew up like you know the the, the Elmo thing with the fire going all around him. Right. Yeah. That was, that was a disaster. Lowry gets scratched. All this stuff happens. Yeah, it won't. We'll only be posting twenty to thirty minutes before, so I don't have to have a heart attack like I did on Saturday now, or well, Sunday. I mean, Sunday. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the benefits of membership. We have really active members in Discord who are, we have each other's backs with the news, and so we're all talking there with the late breaking news, even during the slate. We're we're watching that's right it around the clock. So when you have to pivot in the middle of the slate, we're ready. To help you it's with so that. cool because we have so many members that are in these different cities, so they get that, you know, pregame show and they get that info before anybody else, before it even hits, you know, the fantasy labs and all these other places. You know, we're getting some uh, home views of some of this stuff, so it's it's a nice edge to have. Oh, it's huge. Sometimes what you see in a pregame show or watching the warmups can make it a monstrous edge. And yeah. so that, that's what we do. We work together on that, and it's it's very beneficial. All right, Coach, let's break down the fourth game here, and it's Atlanta in Phoenix. It's not really a late-night hammer game at 221. Phoenix favored yeah. by six. The, these guys are slower pace here, 22nd, 28th. Phoenix with that great defense, they're fifth. Atlanta with the bad defense, and we've got two good offenses here. Atlanta's 11th, and Phoenix is 8th. So I, I got to interrupt you one second because this is a great stat and, and they do have a bad defense. They're ranked 23rd. But guess what? Since the All-Star break, they are fifth. Ooh. So they, they, they were 28th at going into the All-Star break. They have moved up to 23rd and they're closing in on the next two teams. But I this was a stat that I focused on today because it changed my view. And, you know. I looked back at some of these games, and I targeted some folks against Atlanta, and they haven't done well. Well, here it is. The new coach came in. He took over. They've won a ton of games, and the reason they're winning, it's not their offense. If you notice, Trey Young's had a lot of average games. They're winning because they have decided that they're going to play D. He's committed to Tony Snell. He's got Hunter coming back in there. Capella's a top-notch defender, and and I'll— I'll tell you something to be aware of because, you know, you get those stuck in your head. I do all the time thinking, okay, we could pick on Atlanta. It's not the case right now, my man. Yeah, well, Tony Snell's going to ask for a raise. He's, uh, I would say so. Yeah, he's had a nice impact and a lot of good offensive games, some where he doesn't show up and, and do much. But he is a, a big factor here, and we expect him to start. DeAndre Hunter is questionable here again. He's been going in and out of the lineup with the knee issue. So that will uh, be a big factor here in this game for those wings for Phoenix. What can Booker and Bridges do, and who are they going to be playing against? Um, yeah. The other news here with Atlanta is that Lou Williams is questionable. He might make his debut here with the Hawks. Um, well, and so much for that improved defense. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so the guys off the bench for Phoenix are excited about that potential. Yeah. So that, that'll that be a key issue here for this rotation. Do Hunter and Lou Williams play? If they don't, you know, Bogdanovich is still a good price, should get good minutes, and should have a little bit better matchup than he did against Denver when Barton did a pretty good job limiting him. But really, Atlanta, I mean, that was a dud for everybody. So um, who else do we look at here with Atlanta? I mean, I'm not going to not gonna get many guys here against Phoenix in their in their top five defense. Uh, John Collins would be an interesting pay-up GPP option. I think he can uh, do some damage against the likes of Crowder. And then with the bigs, uh, you know, really interesting slate here with these centers. Do we pay up for Jokic? Do we roll the dice with Dwight Howard? Or do we go more of the mid-tier here, Capella and Ayton? They should get solid minutes here against each other. Uh, So that's one thing we need to work through. On the Phoenix side... Um, man, it was Booker last game, right? And, and Paul took a took a back seat. Yeah. Um, to my chagrin, by the way. Right, right. <laughs> um, you know, I I wouldn't mind going with Chris Paul here, if Trey Young is going to spend some time on him. But on Fanduel, we don't really have any point guard spots left in in my primary build. No, so neither. he's a little bit more attractive to me on DraftKings. And other than that, you know, that's probably it. I mean, this could be a one-off game for me. It, it could be a pass. 
uh, and we'll see about Hunter and Lou Williams because they'll they'll definitely cut into potential value guys like Bogdanovich. Well, I'm going to be simple here. I know some people, I've got a few comments, well, don't just skip a game and not explain to why you're skipping it. Well, I want to give you back these those three or four minutes that I would, would tell you why <laughs> I don't like this game. But I just, I don't like the matchup. I don't like the guys that are high-priced. There's no more point guard space for me for Young or Paul. It just, it doesn't make sense, this game. I think it'll be lower scoring, even though the number's not that bad. And uh, it just, it doesn't fit. I think I will be full going into this game. And, uh, you know, only way I'd plug somebody in if I needed a last second super value guy that I think could do well, I'd, I would consider for a half a second like Bogdanovich or Crowder, but I would do it reluctantly. I'd, I think this game is more of a pass. Yeah, and, and Crowder, he pulled the P.J. Washington in the last game, 0 for 9 on three-pointers. I know. He did score two points, though, something P.J. Washington cannot say. He got to the line and, and scored two. It's it's bizarre sometimes, but, you know, like they say, he's due. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, that's our four-game slate for today. We thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Uh, hit the thumbs up and give us a positive review, review wherever you're listening. We're going to continue to do these seven days a week in NBA, and uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. So on behalf of the coach and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow as we look to crush it in DFS.